Hey guys, I've just arrived in Kuala Lumpur. Actually, I just realized I don't even know how to pronounce the city name. <laughs> I'm waiting for my big bag here at the luggage belt, right here. And I will be here for four or five days, I don't even remember, and take you along the way. So stay tuned. While waiting, I just found this quite weird store, <laughs> or however you want to call it. You can buy like everything here, charging cables, even memory cards, what the heck, and X or I have no idea what this should be, a wireless controller and toys, like everything. So I made it through immigration, I have my two bags and the first thing I always do is changing money and getting a SIM card. I already did that so I'm done and ready to go. The only problem is it's already I think 1am so I will have to take a taxi slash grab. Actually I will take grab, it's always easy in Asia and it shouldn't be too expensive, at least I hope so. I will see. <laughs> so. so ordering a grab is super easy. I actually already did it. You can see now here I'm waiting for my driver to pick me up. Nine minutes to go. And you will see where you're driving, where he will bring you. And you even have a chat, which is translated as you can see. But the translation <laughs> doesn't make sense this time. And basically grab is like Uber. That's the easiest way to explain it. I should be used to it by now, but it's so freaking hot and humid. It's basically like in Bangkok, where I live for three months. It's you just come out of the airport and you sweat. It's crazy. And my driver arrived. <laughs> And finally, after a really long journey, actually it was not that long, just a four hour flight, but still it felt really long and I'm really tired. It's, what time is it? 2.30 I think. Oh no, it's two in the morning. I'm done for today. I will take a quick shower and then I need some sleep. Good night guys, see you tomorrow. Good morning guys. I just woke up, it's already noon actually. I had a good sleep and I'm relaxed and ready to explore the city. But first I need some food and I decided to go to a vegetarian restaurant, it's called Simple Life. And actually I ordered a traditional dish from Malaysia. You can see it here. Nazi Lemak. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I also got some Weshi spring rolls and this really healthy looking chews so wondering how the food will be and the food arrives it looks tasty as hell i'm really excited to eat it it's really 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 tasty but also super spicy i'm really surprised i didn't know malaysian food is that spicy it will be a fight but i will survive so they were super delicious and again super spicy. I didn't know my spice tolerance is that fucked up. Did you ever try Malaysian food and was it also that spicy for you? Let me know in the comments. Hey guys, so I made it to the bird park in Kuala Lumpur. It's called Taman Burung. They call it here the world's largest free flight walk-in aviary. Quite long name but world's largest always sounds good and it's basically a lot of birds walking and flying around freely at least that's what they advertise and we'll see how it really is and show you around the entrance comes with this map the area is really big and they have mainly birds from Malaysia but also 10% from other countries so
I may be pretty, but I have an attitude. I will bully anyone who disturbs my personal space. I want to meet that bird. I found him, but he is in a not a cage, but it's it's closed, so not really freely walking around this bird. Really beautiful, but says in the information that they attack people if you go too close. Let's not do it. Here you can also buy fish food and feed some of the fish here. I wouldn't personally do it, I don't know, it just feels weird to buy fish food to feed them there. They probably get food already, but it's a tourist attraction. So I made it through the, the whole park, I think I had a bit more than one hour. The park is honestly quite big and there are a lot of really beautiful birds to see also. Tons of interesting information, but I'm quite disappointed because I thought it would be more like a sanctuary focused on the well-being of the birds while you can still visit and support the case. But in my opinion, it's, it's more like a zoo, just with birds. I mean, you can think about zoos, whatever you want, but I'm not the biggest fan of them because they're basically having animals here, birds in cages. I mean, there were some animals, they have a lot of space, they can roam around, but also others, they are just in cages, they can't do much. You can also feed the animals, which costs more, but I don't know, it's always weird. You can make photos with the animals, like there are some booths with photos. It's a nice attraction for kids. It's nice to see, but I, I wouldn't come here again because I don't really want to support something like this. It's not that bad, I don't say like they harm the animals or anything. I don't have the knowledge to talk about that, but it just doesn't feel right. I mean, you can also see it here, the cage, like, just cage, the huge cage area. But that's how it is. Now going to the next stop, actually, to the National Museum of Malaysia. I'm quite looking forward to it because I don't know what to expect. I honestly don't know much about the history of the country, which is not good, but I'm here to learn something. And I'm already excited to learn more because as I said, I have no clue as of right now. <laughs> and I'm also wondering what is your opinion about it? Like, would you visit a place like this or support it? Or do you prefer to not visit it? It's an interesting topic, but many people have different opinions about it so let me know in the comments <laughs> and I just have to tell it again it's so hot in Kuala Lumpur so hot and humid like you can't believe how much I'm sweating and if you come here definitely bring enough water and if you're white as me sunscreen because you will definitely need it so guys, I made it to the National Museum of Malaysia. It's also called Museum Negara. It's actually the building is quite big, as you can see here. And the entrance is five ringgit, which is a little bit more than one dollar. So let's see how it is. So the museum is split in four different areas about the early history, the Malay kingdoms, the colonial 
era and also Malaysia today. I don't know if you can see anything, but this is a replica of a pillbox that the British people built in Malaysia during the Second World War. They were used as a first defense against the Japanese attacks. I really don't know if you can see anything, but it's quite claustrophobic, really dark and small. Scary. So guys, I made it through the whole museum, it's really interesting actually. I learned a lot that I had no idea about before and I was also surprised the museum is really modern, like you can't complain about anything except what air condition that was not working, but that's life. There was not so much to show you because in the end it's a museum, it's more reading than showing around, but it's really interesting if you're into history. I will now head back to my hostel with public transportation this time. Let's see how this goes. If you didn't know it yet, in uh, Malaysia there is a huge Muslim community, just like the kids that were passing by me. I'm entering the train station, metro station, whatever it is now. I think I took the wrong way because I ended up here at the elevator. But that's fine too. <laughs> Buying a ticket is super easy. You have a machine and it's in English. It's really easy to understand. Then you just pay here and you get a token that I already got. Oh yeah. And you're inside. For that token I will drive Three or four stations I paid 180 ringgit that's like less than 50 cents so the public transportation is super cheap and there are a lot of connections hey guys what's up I just took a little nap did some work I'm now heading to the Alor, I have no idea how to pronounce it again, street food market. Supposed to be one of the best in Asia, looking forward to that. Let's see how it compares to other markets in Asia. The fun thing is there are hundreds thousands of people but still it doesn't feel crowded after you've been especially in the night market in Bangkok they're just so packed you can't move here it's quite okay still really busy but you can at least walk smell something weird on a market in Asia, you can be sure it's this fruit, it's durian, it's, it smells like someone threw up. Actually the taste is good if you eat it, but in your nose it's not nice at all. I 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Just got myself my first snack. So fried sweet potatoes. There is actually tons of restaurants where you can eat. I already ate something, so I'm not that hungry, but I will hunt for some snacks, fruits, and that is perfect for that. I just ordered my favorite food ever. I will show you which one. The dragon fruit is so tasty. I just absolutely love it. So I actually made it through the whole market in just a few minutes. It's a really small market. Unless I missed like part of it. It's only food, which is good because it's cold. It's fucking loud here, by the way. <laughs> no, it's good because it's cold food market, so it's supposed to have food. Anyway, there is a big selection of restaurants, fruits, everything you could think of when it comes to food, so you will definitely find something if you head there. I'm now eating my dragon fruits, super fresh, and see you guys later.